Alright, thank you guys for being here, and welcome to my new walk in Paris. Today is Tuesday, April 23rd. It's around 1 p.m., and the temperature outside is 63 degree Fahrenheit. Okay, are you guys ready? Let's walk today in the Latin Quarter of Paris. We're actually starting the walk from Rue Bucci, which is basically located in Saint-Germain-des-Presses, and we are walking towards the Latin Quarter. Hey, what's up, bro? Hey, what's up with you, man? Who are you? Yo, easy, dude. I'm Kumar. Mind if I join you guys? Actually, you seem like you know your way around here. So, yeah. Sure, no prob. Nice to meet you, man. Where are we going, by the way? We're going to Notre Dame. Notre Dame, uh, who fighting Irish, best football team ever. He's not talking about the team. He's talking about the church, silly. Hey, yo, you talking to me, bro? Who are you, by the way? My name is Robert, and I'm visiting Paris as well. Going to Notre Dame, like you folks. Okay, cool. Nice to meet you, Robert. So I guess I'll be your guide for you both. You tell me, well, what do you know about this place? Dude, not much actually. I just know it has some pretty good chawarmas. That's it. Well, sir, here in the Latin Quarter, cafes are everywhere. Little tables on the sidewalk, people sipping on their fancy coffee and pastries, just watching the world go by. It's a slower pace here, folks. Folks ain't in a hurry to get nowhere, just enjoying the good life. Bravo. That was well said, Rob. What else? Ever heard of Hemingway or Fitzgerald? They, along with countless other writers and artists, practically lived in the Latin Quarter's cafes and bookstores. Imagine Ernest Hemingway sipping coffee right where you're standing. The legacy continues today with charming shops like Shakespeare and Company, a haven for bookworms. Dude, can I ask you something? Why is it called the Latin Quarter? Good question, Kumar. Well, the Latin Quarter is a very old place built in the 13th century. It's famous because of the nearby Sorbonne University. Back in the Middle Age, Latin was the language of instruction at Sorbonne University for centuries during the Middle Ages. With Latin being used so extensively in the area due to the university, the entire neighborhood became associated with the language. The name Latin Quarter likely arose organically and stuck over time. Dude, what's that? Looking so good. It's called Le Merveilleux. You can translate to The Marvelous, which is a truly delightful French pastry. Believe me, it's actually a light and airy meringue shell filled with whipped cream and chocolate coating. All right, guys, voici Le Broco, a Parisian institution, one of the oldest cafes in the city. Here's a breakdown of what makes it special. Steeped in history, founded in 1686, Le Procope has witnessed centuries of Parisian life, 
Think of it as a living piece of history, where intellectuals, revolutionaries, and even literary giants like Voltaire, Rousseau, and Verlaine once gathered. Imagine sipping coffee in the same spot where literary legends once debated ideas and penned masterpieces. Welcome to a hidden gem tucked away in Paris's historic Latin Quarter, Cour du Commerce Saint-André. Sir, are we going inside or not? Hey, chill out, bro. All right, folks, let's get inside. Keep an eye out for historical details as you explore. The passageway itself was built along the perimeter of the 12th century walls of King Philippe Auguste that once delimited the city. You might even spot remnants of a tower incorporated into one of the buildings. Dude, just explain something, please. What can I eat inside these restaurants? Basically, it's traditional French cuisine. Expect dishes like coco au vin, chicken and wine, and tete de veau, calf's head, alongside more modern options. Don't forget to try their signature desserts, like the mille foy, a layered pastry with pastry cream, or their Procopio-style tiramisu. Welcome to Rue Saint-André des Arts. This lively street stretches from the iconic Place Saint-Michel and is renowned as one of the most popular and enjoyable spots for nightlife in the Latin Quarter. With its diverse array of bars, snack bars, and restaurants, Rue Saint-André des Arts caters to every taste and budget. Whether you're craving a delicious crepe from one of the many renowned creperies, a hearty slice of pizza, a satisfying kebab, or a pint of Guinness at an authentic Irish pub, you're sure to find something to tantalize your taste buds. And as the sun sets, the atmosphere transforms into a vibrant hub of activity, making it the perfect place to unwind and soak up the Parisian nightlife. Oh, is that an art gallery? Nope, that's a hairstyling studio. Dude, you sound like George W. Bush. Yay big deal, newsflash. I've heard that before. Duh.
The beauty of Place saint andre des Art lies in its location. It serves as a springboard for further exploration. Head down Rue saint andre des Art for a shopping adventure, stroll towards the majestic Saint-Michel Fountain, or wander deeper into the labyrinthine streets of the Latin Quarter, uncovering hidden gems around every corner. Welcome to Place Saint-Michel. The centerpiece of the square is the Saint-Michel Fountain, a beautiful structure featuring a bronze statue of the Archangel Michael slaying a dragon. This iconic landmark is a popular meeting point and a great spot for photo ops. Dude, how far are we from Notre Dame? Not that far, 660 yards from here.
Le Caveau de la Huchette is a legendary jazz club that has been captivating audiences for over 75 years. Its intimate, dimly lit atmosphere and rich history make it a must visit for any jazz enthusiast or anyone seeking a taste of authentic Parisian nightlife. The club's original vaulted cellar dates back to the 16th century, and its walls have echoed with the music of jazz greats like Sidney Bechet, Dexter Gordon, and Art Tatum. The air is thick with history, and the ambiance is undeniably captivating. Look! That's Notre Dame in the background. Welcome to Notre Dame Cathedral. French Notre Dame de Paris, meaning Our Lady of Paris, is a magnificent Gothic cathedral on the Ile de la Cite, an island in the Seine River in the heart of Paris, France. It's a globally recognized symbol of the city and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Construction began in 1163 and spanned nearly 200 years, finally being completed in the mid-14th century. The cathedral has witnessed significant historical events, including the coronations of French monarchs like Henry VI of England and Napoleon Bonaparte. It narrowly escaped destruction during the French Revolution and suffered severe damage during a fire in 2019. The restoration of Notre Dame is a complex and ongoing process. The French government is committed to rebuilding the cathedral while preserving its historic integrity. The current focus is on stabilizing the structure and protecting the remaining stained glass windows and sculptures. The official reopening of the cathedral is currently projected for December 8, 2024, with a focus on ensuring the safety of visitors while restoration work continues. Thank you. 
are a quintessential Parisian landmark, lining the banks of the Seine River with their distinctive green boxes, overflowing with used and antiquarian books. These charming stalls are more than just booksellers. They're a living testament to Parisian culture and history. The tradition of Bouquiniste dates back to the 16th century, when street vendors began selling books along the Seine. Over the centuries, they faced regulations and restrictions, but their presence remained a constant feature of Parisian life. Today, there are around 226 Bouquinistes lining the Seine, concentrated on the left bank between the Pont Marie and the Quai du Louvre, and on the right bank between the Pont Neuf and the Quai de la Tournelle. That place is famous because of the bookstore right next to this cafe. The Shakespeare and Company is more than just a bookstore. It's a legendary institution steeped in literary history, bohemian charm, and a love for the written word founded in 1917 by Sylvia Beach, an American expat with a passion for literature. The original store became a haven for the lost generation writers like Ernest Hemingway, F. Scott Fitzgerald, and James Joyce, who frequented the shop, read their works aloud, and even resided there for short periods.
Alright, thank you guys for watching. Hope you liked it. Stay tuned. See you later, alligator. <laughs>